Hi, welcome. I'm going to introduce the, the paper we just published and um, it's about ATMs and malware that affects uh, ATMs and ways of uh, attacking ATM, uh, ATM installations. And um, well, uh, you have to think that uh, ATMs, they are nowadays uh, just big Windows devices, right, with a safe with a lot of money attached to them. So they're of course a prime target for bad guys to try to, you know, empty uh, empty uh, those safes from money. So you see them everywhere and uh, you know, they need to be they need to be taken care of. Uh, so there's I, I categorize uh, the, those attacks in in two kind of categories. One is a physical attack, so the the bad guy has to uh, approach the ATM, access the inside of the ATM, so just open the case and be able to install physically uh, the malware into them. And um, just uh, recently in the last year, there's been uh, very a few reports that uh, there's been network attacks and uh, that's the second category, just network attacks, attacks to the network and that usually happens um, when the bad guys hack into the corporate network of the bank and then they are able to find their way into the ATM network. So, so that's not a trivial thing to do and uh, they need to have a very solid foothold into the network before doing that. But I'll talk about that later. We'll start with physical, uh, physical attacks. Uh, physical manipulation is, is just what it sounds. The bad guys open or access uh, they either force open or, or they have some generic keys where they can open the casing of the machine and then access the either USB or CD drive and then uh, infect the, the machine with them. Um, there's been cases of physical hacking, so you can either um, in, infect the machine with some malware or you can just hack it. Uh, this is an example from uh, from a Ukrainian case where they just attached a keyboard and they started hacking away until they were able to to entice the the machine to to give all the money. This is another example from from the arrest because these guys were arrested and you see how there's a there's a USB um, keyboard uh, switch keyboard mouse switch. So it was just a pure case of hacking. And this is one way of attacking, of course, but we're going to focus on malware attacks. Mm -hmm. That means that opening the machine and being able to infect it with some specific kind of malware. Uh, there are a few uh, families that we've seen, and this is the paper is just a summary of the, all of the um, families that we've been able to, to see. So there's a good technical description of each of them. So if you're really interested in, in what the names of the, not only the names of the families, but also how they operate and the kind of characteristics of the of those families, then I recommend you to download the paper and take a look at it. I'm going to summarize them, but all of them are like this. You know, you just open the casing and uh, be able to either boot from a, from a, um, a USB drive or boot from a CD drive, and then uh, you create a, a um, you boot from from a separate operating system, and then mount the ATM uh, hard drive, and then infect it. So it, it sounds uh, very difficult, but if they automate the, the the steps, they can infect the machine in like five minutes or so. So is is not that difficult when you really put your mind into it at least that that's the uh, what the bad guys are doing so you see that the, the granddaddy of them all it's uh, it's called skymer it was first found in 2009 in russia and then it was found again in 2011 in uh, in latin america so we don't really know if it's a russian technology that has been adopted in south america or or, or it's a both of the same of the things at the same time. It targets exclusively one kind of machines, so it's only this brand, and uh, possibly right now it's been seen in Latin America. So this is the granddaddy first uh, from 2005 and nine, but you see that after 2009 it was 2011, and that's the second version of Skymer, and after that we're seeing a lot from 2015 on really picking up speed from 2016 and 2017, and you'll see it later. Like the number two, and it's again South America, the name is Plotus, 
This one is it's an interesting case. It was first found in 2013, but uh, there's been like many versions of it. And uh, a lot of these versions, they have uh, the possibility of attaching different um, different hardware. So one of the versions, for instance, have uh, the possibility for the bad guys to attach a, a SIM card, so a, a, a phone with a SIM card, and they can send the commands to empty the safe by means of an SMS. So they can text the, the ATM and then the ATM can just uh, empty the safe for them. So just the objective is just emptying the cases and this uh, different different brand so it's very very uh, targeted against uh, a very specific brand and again Latin America you see that Latin America is one of the hotbeds of, of this kind of malware as we've seen it now and number three is very similar it's called Green Dispenser first found in 2015 it's very similar to the previous one to Plotus but it has slight differences so the code base is completely different it's coded in a very different language so it's, it's clearly a different thing um, again, ATM uh, very specific against one specific brand, different than the previous. So it might be the same group that is branching out uh, their their development. We don't know, right? It's again Latin America, and um, the next uh, two families are going to be very focused on the Russian market and on the um, European. This one is uh, Patpin, and you see that how it's picking up speed. And here it's 2014 already. Uh, cash and it targets one specific brand again. So this is probably the case that the, it, this was found in Russia for the first time. This is probably the case that these guys uh, started attacking a one specific brand because that was uh, what the, the, the local banks were using. And then they started selling uh, those uh, those the malware samples to other people so that they could they could uh, in turn attack other other banks. So this is Eastern Europe. Uh, it's been seen all around Europe and normally it's Eastern European criminals that are just flying into one country and victimizing a bunch of machines and then going back home. So number five, is, it's, it's been seen recently. We discovered it ourselves in Trend Micro and uh, the name is Alice. It's super, super simple. First found in 2014, though it was only reported in 2016. And it just empties the machine. It's dead simple. It's a super lean kind of malware that does... Uh, the only thing it does is it just empties the machine. It doesn't have any, any, any sophistication whatsoever. It's just super simple. But the only thing is that it targets any ATM. So it, it targets any brand, anything. So, so it's, it's pretty complete, but it's super simple. Uh, with another region, of course. Um, then I'm going to go through the network installation real quick. There's been a few cases where there there were ATMs attacks uh, through the network. Normally, the case is that they uh, take over um, the, the the network by means of you know very simple phishing emails or you know the usual key logging, compromising compromising of accounts, and then they start getting more privilege, getting into even the AD server, and once they, they manage to have the Active Directory uh, compromised, then they um, see what the segment of the network is able to administrate the ATM network, and then they jump into it and they install stuff, and you'll see some examples. In this case, well, two, two entry methods, either by hacking or malware, and uh, the payload is either ATM malware, or you'll see later how some of them don't even bother to, to, to create ATM malware for, this, uh, for these uh, attacks and they just uh, use uh, test tools from, from the ATM vendor. So the first one I'm going to analyze is the Taiwan attack. The Taiwan attack, this, this is uh, what the company doing the forensics um, and put, in, put out to the media. So you can see how uh, the hacker group uh, managed to take over the London branch then from the London branch they went, they jumped into the uh, Taiwan headquarters. Uh, it's it's a Taiwanese bank, and then from the Taiwanese uh, headquarters, they were able to see what um, a a software uh, de deployment service that was uh, deploying uh, updating the servers. Uh, the, sorry, the ATMs. So they were able to then deploy a very specific tool from the vendor and uh, and infect all those ATMs. And then they just um, hired a bunch of mules. They went into in front of the machines and they emptied the safes. 
The second one is Cobalt Strike. It's very similar again. This comes from Group IV. Group IV provided a lot of very good technical information on the paper. And it was a, an attack that happened in, in against the Russian bank. So it was pretty much the same. You know, this is the the kind of phishing email that were being, being sent to employees of the bank. And then once the employee um, got himself infected, then uh, the bad guys already got a foothold into the network. They escalated privileges until they were able to, in this case, uh, it was, yeah, exactly, Microsoft Remote Desktop. So it was uh, just RDP. Um, the machines were being administrated through RDP from the corporate network to the ATM network. So once the bad guys had enough credentials, they were able to use RDP to log into those ATMs and infect them. And the third one is Anunak, uh, also known as Carbonac. It was very similar, really, really similar. So the bad guys got into the network and they managed to cross into the into the um, into the ATM network and then just control the machines. And once they control the machines, they were able to use a test vendor, a test tool from the vendor. Uh, this is one of the infected emails. This is uh, from a paper from Kaspersky. Both uh, Kaspersky Labs and uh, and Group IV have uh, very detailed papers on the exact workings on, on this malware and these attacks. Uh, this is again the, the zip file that contained the the executable, and this is the test tool that was being used. And it's worth mentioning that this is not the original test tools that the bad guys uploaded and used in these attacks, but it was a modified test tool. They modified it slightly so that it would work. Otherwise, the, 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 the test tool would not have worked uh, by default. And, and this is a very interesting case that happened in, uh, in Thailand. Now, in Thailand, it was pretty much the same case, but instead of deploying a, a vendor test tool, what they did is deploying a very specific malware written ad hoc for, for the attack. The malware was Ripper. That was a super interesting uh, case where, the, since the machines were already infected through the network, then the mules were able to just log into the machines by a specific uh, key sequence and then access a, a specific uh, malware menu where one of the options was empty the safe. This is part of the menu. Oh, let me see. It was S SDS again, a deployment system, and uh, uh, this was the, the summary: is Ripper 2016 cache uh, any and all ATMs. And uh, let me show you uh, a small screenshot of the menu that the bad guys used. Is this one? You see, uh, one of the sub menus would allow even to. Uh, disable the network. So once the bad guy was able to log into the malware menu, they, they could disable the network so that uh, any monitoring in place would not have worked. And then they, they emptied the safe and, and left uh, the, the country. Uh, now, uh, another interesting one that Kaspersky Labs brought recently was ATM or AT Mitch. And very interesting case, and it was pretty much the same, very specific against banks, they take over, and uh, the only thing is that in here they could not able, they, they were not able to piece together all of the different parts of the malware, so only a few DLLs were, uh, were recovered from the attack. So I don't have very clear what everything, um, all the data from the attack, but uh, if you're interested in these attacks, um, you should download the paper and take a look at it. I think there's a lot of very useful information. And uh, this is pretty much our, what, what the paper is about. I'm sure that uh, if you are technical, you will find really, really useful uh, pieces of data there. And uh, if you are from the financial industry or you belong to a law enforcement agency, then um, you should request a, a special paper that it's a little bit more detailed with uh, additional ATM installation tips, you know, how to secure your ATM installation. So make sure you do that if you, if you belong to those industries. And, and if not, just uh, download the paper and enjoy. Thank you.